I think music is a mystery. People take it for granted because it's such a common everyday thing. But there was a time in life when music was considered sacred. It was for a special occasion for raising consciousness uh, from the ordinary, the ordinary concerns of daily life and to bring it to a higher level closer to the cosmos. Muram has that capacity. And if I don't think I'm the only thing unusual about me, maybe, is that I'm the first. I believe there will be many more. If they knew about it, they could feel the power of Muram. They would all come running. Well, it was in Los Angeles and I was living there. I was 21 years old and the year was 1972. And I met an old man from Dagestan who played Kamancha. And I was deeply, deeply impressed with the power of the atmosphere he created. And his melodies were so simple, but the atmosphere was impossibly powerful. So strong. And I felt it so deep. As I, didn't, I didn't know I had it inside that deep. And I felt I must learn this music. Fantastic. lovely the people were lovely the place is a perfect room for the setting because it's it's quiet intimate music everybody listened with great uh, quiet and respect so for me it was a perfect event I wish you good luck thank, thank you Vassal thank you
represent the Republic of Azerbaijan in the United Kingdom. Uh, it's uh, a great honor for every ambassador of each country uh, to be in London uh, and to represent uh, his, his country. Uh, the reason is it's a special day because uh, uh, the fact is that I know this gentleman for 17 years. <laughs> and uh, actually, in 1990, I couldn't even dream that Azerbaijan would be independent. And I would be uh, the ambassador to the United Kingdom. And, and even I also couldn't dream that time when I met Jeffrey in Washington, D.C. It was March of 1990, if I'm not mistaken. And there was an Oruz Bayram also arranged by Azerbaijan Society of Washington. Very much similarity to what is going today. And after his concert, actually, he introduced himself to me and he told that he just uh, recently came from Azerbaijan. And he, uh, I think Jeff, I can talk about it right now. He fell in love with a young Azerbaijan lady. <laughs> and he was planning <laughs> to go back to Baku and to marry her. And uh, on my way to Baku, I was planning to, uh, to stop in, in New York City. And he was living in New York City that time. And he asked me just uh, uh, to spend an evening with him. And he also asked me uh, to help him uh, to bring his uh, future wife uh, to the United States. <laughs> and actually, and I even didn't know that his future wife was living uh, uh, actually at the same apartment building uh, where I lived with my family. <laughs> Can you imagine how, how many coincidences? But the most, uh, the most complicated was to convince her parents to let her go to the United States. <laughs> and I did that. I also remember that Jeffrey asked me to give her a letter, which was, I think, 12 pages, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> my children, thank you. <laughs> And, uh, and when I was actually uh, stationed in the United States also, I never could imagine, and Jeffrey also, in 1993, as the first consul of Azerbaijan to Washington, I called him and, and he arrived. And we made a very good performance in Washington, D.C. of Azerbaijani culture. It was very important for us because uh, Azerbaijan was uh, that time independent only for, for two years and there was not too much knowledge about my republic in, in the United States. And can you imagine when a, an American is introducing Azerbaijani culture in Washington DC, playing guitar playing and speaking Azerbaijani and uh, talking about the history of the land uh, of Azerbaijan, about his culture. It was tremendous. It was great. And uh, and now, uh, here, I am just speechless that after 17 years we met here in London. And thank you for coming. I would like to thank him personally, as, uh, as a human being, as uh, a man with a uh, uh, big personality, and very open, and, uh, very intelligent, and uh, deep, uh, and uh, a hum human-loving person. And what he did for Azerbaijan, it's, it's great, it's, uh, it's uh, I would say, very valuable. And using this opportunity, Jeffrey, I would like uh, uh, now to give something that, uh, that you will keep with you. Uh, uh, this is uh, a certificate of appreciation. And it is presented to Jeffrey Werber in uh, grateful recognition of your promotion of Azerbaijan culture and contribution to the development of Mugan. London, October 2007, Embassy of the Republic of Azerbaijan in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland.
is as famous as any of the famous countries in the world today. And when I go to the colleges and uh, universities of America and Europe, I begin by saying, have you heard of Argentina? Have you heard of Poland? Have you heard of Afghanistan, Korea, Philippines, Azerbaijan? All of a sudden, Azerbaijan is blank. Oh, they have no culture. They have no history. There's nobody there. How is this possible? Azerbaijan is the last great secret of the world culture. And it is my joy and my pleasure and my burden to bear this and make sure that before I leave here, somebody knows about Azerbaijan the way I know about Azerbaijan. That's my goal in life. Now, <clears throat> this award usually it should come at the end because now I have more pressure to play well. <laughs> Maybe I don't deserve it. This is not for today's sponsor, this is for 17 years uh, of your activity. Oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> I want to skip all the usual, you know, talk, talk, talk. I usually do, you know, lectures. I explain where is Azerbaijan. Most people here are either Azerbaijani or they know where Azerbaijan is. They don't need to hear from me, you know, what I usually explain to uh, my poor, hapless American, uh, good hearted, but empty headed. <laughs> Patriots. Now, uh, there's only one correction. In the uh, publicity material, it said something that's really not true, and I owe it to you since you came out of your way and you took your evening today to come here. There's no master here. There's only a amateur, and in French, amateur in Hadas Cab. It's someone who loves them. They do it for love. I'm not a master. It was a mistake they worked with. Mr. Warbar is a master. I'm a student, and I will be one forever. And I'm studying the magic of traditional Azerbaijani culture, and my specialty, of course, is the music. But it, it begins there, it doesn't end there. And uh, in order to expand you know, the repertoire, I started to teach myself to play this instrument about three years ago. So I'm going to demonstrate some improvisations in the Muran Shur, which I feel the, the Oud, which by the way originally is Barbat, right? From the southern part of Azerbaijan, they now call Iran. Excuse my Azerocentric worldview. But really, it was the Safavids that, uh, uh, and we know that they were Azeris. And uh, just like the Russians, you know, the Romanovs, they love to speak French. They didn't make them Frenchmen. Well, the Safavids, they love to speak Farsi, but they didn't make them Persians. <laughs> right? Anyway, we know the truth. This Barbat, which is now the Oud, uh, is another one of the great inventions of the great creative genius of the Azerbaijani culture. And this was given to me yesterday, by the way. Uh, I want to tell a quick story because I can't help myself. <laughs> About a year ago, I got a telephone call from a man who said he wanted to learn to play guitar. I said, okay, I'll give you the name of a man in Brooklyn. Uh, Arif Bagaro is a guitar player. And he said, no, I, I want to learn from you. I said, who is this? And he says, yeah, come to my house. And I taught him some lessons. We got to be friendly. And then uh, after several lessons, a month or two, we got close. He said, how did you get my name? He said, you know, 25 years ago, I saw you play at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In 1982, I guess it was so 25 years ago. And he, re he remembered that. He said, I want to take lessons from this man someday. So after a year of studying with me, and he paid for his lessons, 
Yesterday, I get in my car, I pack up all the instruments into the car, I take my key, I'm about to turn the car, and then somebody pulls in front of my car, and what is this? And the man gets out of the car, and it's my student. I said, John, I have to go to, I have to go, I'm going to work, I have to, I'm ready to go to London, I don't have time, but did we have a lesson today? He said, no, no, I just wanted to bring you something. And he brought me this. I said, are you crazy? He said, this is how it is. This is, this is how he, this is a, if you follow what I'm saying, his name is John Hardy. Right? <laughs> and he's learning guitar, and he, and he gave me this, and uh, I had to fight back the tears. I said, you know, how much do I owe you? He said, oh no, you're my teacher. So the tradition of having respect for the teacher is, it's, it's, uh, it's alive in, in some people.
Do you have any questions? <laughs> Make me feel at home and ask me a question. I do have one. Please, by all means. Is there any uh, name of that composition? Shur. Oh, that was the name. Muram Shur. And uh, oftentimes you know, the uh, students, of course, they've never heard this music, and they say, was that composed or was that improvised? And I explain that somewhat like jazz, it's theme and variation, where you have a, a, you know, a known composition, and then you play with it. But you can't jump out of it completely. You have to stay within the, you know, the known area. But there's a lot of freedom in there. And uh, so I like to explain by saying, for those who know Muram, you should know which Muram from three notes. The first three notes, and you know, ah, that's Muram, sure. The next three notes, you should know who's playing it. 